In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to paint some Space Wolf Power Armor, the weapons and accessories, and I'll even show you how to paint some wolf pelts. Welcome to Tabletop Ready, my name's Michael and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how you can paint Space Wolves. I'll put the brushes and paints I use in this tutorial in the description below as well as putting them on the screen when I use them. If you enjoy my content please give this video a like and let me know in the comments below and if you want to help support what I do I have a Patreon which I'll also link in the description. I really appreciate any help and support and it goes a long way to growing the channel and allows me to keep improving the content I create for you. And I want to give a huge thank you to Jaden Wright who has just become my latest supporter by becoming a member on this channel. Your support really makes a huge difference, thank you. I've built the Space Wolf and sub assemblies to make painting easier. I've also undercoated the Space Wolf using Wraithbone Spray to give us a nice vibrant colour. In the first part of this tutorial, I'm going to take you through the steps to painting the iconic coloured Space Wolf Power Armour, including how to recess shade and the different stages of highlighting. We want to start off by painting a base colour which we can then shade and highlight, and by using some painting basics which I'll go through, we can get a nice smooth solid colour to work from. The colour I'm using is rust grey, and whenever you're painting I recommend thinning our paints first of all with an equal amount of water. As well, try not to go over any area you've already painted as this will create unwanted texture whilst the paint is still drying. It's also better to paint in multiple thin layers so we don't lose any detail on our miniatures. For the first layer I like to use a flat brush as this spreads the paint more evenly. And once that layer is dry, switch to a normal brush so we can make sure to get any areas we may have missed with a flat brush. Repeat the process until you're happy you have that smooth solid base colour we're after. With the base colour painted, the next step is to paint all the armour joints. I'm using a bad and black and we want to do this now because I know it's going to be messy and we don't want to ruin any shading or highlighting we may have already done. To clean up any mistakes or messy areas, just use the rust grey we used as our base colour. With that done, let's get some definition on the armour with some recess shades. A recess shade is done by painting a darker shade or colour directly into the recesses and shallow details of a miniature. This allows us to create that definition without affecting the main colour too much. For our Space Wolf armour, let's do two stages of recess shading, starting with the fang. Thin down slightly more than we normally would, this is going to give us some softer tones to start with. And whenever I'm doing a recess shade, I find using a glaze brush is perfect for the job. It gives us more control as we don't have to worry about overloading the brush with shade and it's able to get into smaller details that can be difficult for a larger brush. Now let's use some Norn Oil which will be more pronounced and really bring out the details of the armour. Again if you're a bit messy you can always neaten up any mistakes after with some rust grey. Nobody's perfect. I now want to spend some time going through the process of highlighting. I want to do this because highlighting for me has to be the one technique that if you can do well you can paint anything. And when highlighting I like to have a brush that I keep separate so I know I have a nice point on it when I need it. You also want to think about the consistency of the paint. I find I don't use as much water as I normally would as this is going to help give us that strong colour without multiple passes we would normally need to do when layering. It's also a good idea to remove some of the paint from the brush onto some kitchen paper which is going to help prevent those thick blobby lines. The first highlight that I'm going to show you is a chunky highlight and I'm using an equal mix of both rust grey and Fenrisian grey. The first highlight wants to be quite a thick line and I'm almost using the side of my brush for this highlight to get the thickness I'm after. So take your time painting along all the edges of panels and details. Next is going to be an edge highlight using Fenris in grey and to make this easier you can use the edge of your brush and run it along those edges to paint the highlights. For the areas you can't do this you'll have to take your time painting thin lines along those edges to create the highlights. Highlighting is the most time consuming part of painting any miniature but once you're done it really does make the difference in bringing out all those edges and details. We're going to finish up with a spot highlight now using Blue Horror. 
So using the same techniques I've just shown you, you want to pick out the more prominent edges on the armour. And when you're done, hopefully you can see that it really was worth all that effort. Let's now move on to getting everything else painted, starting with the metallic details. After painting armour on Space Marines, I tend to like getting all the metals painted, which on a Space Wolf is going to be silver and gold. Let's start painting the silver details using Iron Hand Steel. Create some definition on these areas with a wash with some Null Oil. Finish with a highlight using Stormhouse Silver. For all the gold details, let's first paint them using Retributor Armour. Give these areas a wash as well with some Rikon Flesh Shade. Finish the gold by bringing out the details with Liberated Gold. I think we're now ready to work on painting any weapons and accessories. I think we're now ready to work on painting any weapons and accessories your space walls may have. The armour joints first of all can be finished with a chunky highlight using Eshin Grey and then a fine highlight using Dawnstone. For the leather details such as belts and pouches, we want to start by painting Rhinox Hide as our base colour. Give this an all over shade of Norn Oil. Then paint a chunky highlight using Mornfang Ground. And finish with an edge highlight of Carrick Stone. Any weapon casings can be painted with a bad and black. With a chunky highlight using Dark Reaper. And then finish it off with painting a fine highlight using Femrisian Grey. With the weapons and accessories done, I want to spend some time showing you how to paint the shoulder pads of a Space Wolf. The shoulder pads on a Space Wolf are just as important and iconic as the light grey power armour they have. So I want to make sure you're confident enough to get these painted as well, starting with painting the yellow pad. While spacing our Space Wolf, I intentionally did my best to leave the area we're going to be painting yellow the Wraithbone spray we used at the very start of this tutorial. If this needs tidying up, then just use some Wraithbone out of the pot. Now the area is ready for some Yorial Yellow, remembering that multiple layers are better to get a nicer finish. Let's make the yellow look more interesting now with a glaze. And to make the glaze, I thin down some Avalon Sunset with some Lamy Medium, which is going to make it more transparent. Apply this to the lower half of the pad as an even thin coat rather than like a wash. This is what makes it a glaze. You can if you want to, do multiple layers of the glaze to build up that transition. Just remember to let each layer fully dry before applying another one. Now use some Rikon Flesh Shade in the recess around the rim of the pad just like we did with the armour. Let's finish the yellow pad with a highlight around the edge using Dawn Yellow. You'll have to do your best painting a thin line for the highlight. Just remember to take your time. The other shoulder pad on a space wall shows what kind of unit it belongs to. And for this example, I'll be showing you how to paint a red and black marking found on Intercessors and Grey Hunters. Start with the base colour of Mephiston Red, and this time it's not necessary to have that Wraith Bone colour first, as Mephiston Red covers better. We now want to do a bit of freehand to paint the jagged markings, and it's important to remember that it's okay to be messy and they don't need to be perfect. Begin by painting three evenly spaced lines using a bad and black. Next mark three points along these lines where you want the tips of the triangles to be. I notice they are more diagonally positioned rather than aligned in a row. Now all you need to do is paint in the lines that are going to create the jagged pattern we're after. Then fill in the areas you want to be black and neaten up and fill in the areas that are red. I think our Space Wolf is really coming together now, but there are still a couple of things I want to show you before we finish. Let's start by painting any furry details using your Shabdi Bone. Now create a wash using an equal mix of Skeleton Horde and Lamy Medium. Apply the wash all over the fur and let that dry. Now create another wash using Saigold Brown and Lamy Medium. This time the wash is applied to the inner areas of the fur. 
Again, make sure to let this fully dry before we move on to the next step. We can finish any fur with a light dry brush and if you don't know how to dry brush, all you need to do is take a small amount of paint straight from the pot and work it into the bristles. Now you want to remove any paint from the brush until no more is coming off onto the paper towel. I'm using Screaming Skull and the idea is to move your brush quite quickly against any detail and this will allow any paint left on the brush to be deposited on that raised detail but not in the shallow areas where we don't want it. And this is an easy way of bringing out all that detail on the fur. I like to leave any lenses till last as it's the detail that really makes the marine come alive. Being as neat as possible, using a small layer brush for this, paint a line of white scar in the centre of each lens. Now apply some Blood Angels red contrast into each lens recess, finishing up our Space Wolf. The only thing left to do now is to put all the parts together and it's best to use super glue for this. Our Space Wolf is now finished and I hope I've been able to give you the confidence and knowledge to go away and paint some of your own. I've got plenty of other tutorials on the channel showing you all kinds of different techniques that will help you paint all kinds of miniatures and details. Thank you to my current Patreon and YouTube members who really make a difference to produce the content on this channel. Remember you can become one as well by following the link in the description which will give you access to my tutorials early and you'll be able to see what I get up to behind the scenes whilst making these videos. I really enjoy making these tutorials and I hope you find them useful. You can really help the channel by liking the video and commenting below and I always make sure to reply to any comments when I can. Also make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future content and I'll see you in the next video.